Let's talk about a piece of tech that's so fundamental to our modern lives, yet most of us don't even know we're using it. It's this invisible engine humming along quietly behind pretty much everything you do online. And we're talking, of course, about Linux. So let's kick this off with a question. I mean, think about it for a second. Your phone, the entire global network of the internet, the cloud where all your photos and files live, they seem like completely different worlds, right? Well, it turns out they all share one big secret ingredient. And what's wild is that you are using that secret ingredient right now. The simple act of searching for this explainer, clicking on it, and streaming it to your screen, yeah, that was almost certainly powered by it. The truth is, you're a heavy Linux user, and you probably had no idea. Every time you do a search, watch a video, order a pizza, or scroll through your social media feed, you are interacting with massive systems built on top of Linux. It has, without a doubt, become the unspoken language of our digital world. Okay, so what is this thing? How can it be everywhere and, you know, nowhere at the same time? Let's peel back the layers and get to the core of what Linux really is. So at its absolute most basic level, Linux is a kernel. Now just think of the kernel as the brain of the computer, or maybe its central nervous system. It's the very first piece of software that loads up, and its job is to manage everything. We're talking the processor, the memory, the screen. It's the ultimate middleman between the physical hardware and the apps you actually use. Now, this brings up a really common point of confusion, one that people in the know love to debate. Is it Linux or GNU Linux? Well, the best analogy is a car. The Linux kernel technically is just the engine. It's the core, it's powerful, but an engine by itself isn't a car, right? To get a complete usable operating system, you need that Linux kernel plus a whole bunch of tools like shells, compilers, and user interfaces that came from a project called GNU. So the complete car, that's really GNU Linux. So where did all this come from? The story really starts back in the 70s with Unix, this super powerful and flexible operating system that laid all the groundwork. Then in 83, a guy named Richard Stallman started the GNU project to build all those tools for a completely free operating system. There was just one piece missing, the kernel. And that's where in 1991, a student in Finland named Linus Torvalds just decided to build his own kernel, basically for fun. And this quote right here, it just perfectly captures the spirit of how it all began. Linus posted this message online, making it clear this was just a hobby and that it wouldn't be anything big and professional. It's pretty amazing to think that what started as a hobby would become, arguably, the single most important piece of software in history. And here's a great little fun fact for you. He actually wanted to call his project Freaks, you know, a mashup of Free, Freak, and the X from Unix. But the administrator of the server where he uploaded the code didn't like the name and changed it to Linux, a mix of Linus and Unix. And well, the name stuck. So how in the world did a student's hobby project take over the planet? Well, the secret ingredient wasn't just the code itself. It was the whole philosophy behind it. See, for a long time, software was closed source. You'd buy a program, but the recipe, the actual source code, was a closely guarded secret. You couldn't see it. You definitely couldn't change it. But Linux embraced the complete opposite idea, open source. With open source, the recipe is available to everyone. You can look at it, you can learn from it, and most importantly, you can help make it better. And this created this incredible, powerful feedback loop. Linus shared his code and brilliant programmers from all over the world just jumped in to help. They'd add features, fix bugs, and then share their improvements back with the entire community. This collaboration just massively sped up development, making Linux more powerful and more stable at a pace that no single company could ever hope to match. This whole open philosophy led to another amazing thing, an explosion of variety. This is really where the Linux ecosystem just blossoms into this incredible, diverse world. So because anyone could take the kernel and all those tools, people started packaging them together in different ways for different reasons. These complete packages are called distributions, or distros for short. So going back to our car analogy, if the kernel is the engine, then a distro is the entire car, a specific model, like a sedan, an SUE, or a race car, all kitted out with everything you need to just get in and drive. And this family tree just shows you that incredible diversity in action. You can see these major lineages. You've got foundational distros like Debian and Red Hat, which then fork, that's when someone takes the code and creates their own version, into some of the most popular operating systems in the world, like Ubuntu and Fedora. There's even a little branch over there called Android. You may have heard of it. 
Now, when you use one of these distros, you can interact with it in two very different ways. On the left, you've got a familiar graphical user interface, a GUI, with all the windows and icons we know and love. But on the right, that's the command line, the CLI. And yeah, it might look a little intimidating, but for developers and system administrators, the command line is celebrated for its raw power, its speed, and its ability to automate really complex tasks. It's why it's the absolute standard for running servers. So let's bring this all home. We've gone from a humble hobby project all the way to a global powerhouse. Where does Linux actually stand today? Get ready for this number. 90%. That's the percentage of the public cloud. We're talking the big ones like Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure, the very services that power the modern internet that runs on Linux. Its stability, its efficiency, and the fact that it's free, it just became the no-brainer choice for everyone building the infrastructure of our digital lives. So you see, Linux isn't just one thing. It's the literal foundation for nearly every major tech trend of the 21st century. The cloud, virtualization, your Android phone, the Internet of Things, the world's fastest supercomputers, even your smart TV. And the robots in a factory, they are all standing on the shoulders of that little kernel a student in Finland wrote, just for fun. And I think this is the perfect way to put it. It was a revolution in its philosophy. This radical idea of giving the source code away for free. But its real, lasting power comes from its constant collaborative evolution, with thousands of people around the globe making it a little bit better every single day. And that really just leaves us with a mind-bending question, doesn't it? This entire global technological backbone, it all started with one person's curiosity and hobby project. So as technology keeps changing, driven by this open evolutionary engine, you have to wonder, what new worlds will it build next?